Hey everybody, I'm Bueller from Comics with Bueller, and this is Bob from Everything Comics, and you're watching Comic Book Addicts. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to another Comic Book Addicts. Bob and Bueller in the intro. Uh, did anybody get to see the uh, Coffee and Comics this morning? The special that Bob and Bueller did this morning. Uh, it's kind of a rarity to get to see. Uh, those two get together and do the coffee and comics, but uh, we got an episode this morning and it was awesome. So uh, that's why I decided to open with that intro there with Bob and Bueller. And uh, how's everybody doing? Comic Book Addicts, episode 63. It's Monday, April 15th, the start to a brand new week. I hope your week is going well. I think it's been a little bit better of a week this week than it was last week. So that's good. Um, we had a couple of really good things happen this week. We had X-Men 97. Everybody's been talking about that. I'm pretty sure that's been the talk of the week so far um, is the X-Men 97. Man, that was so awesome. Uh, did you guys check it out? Did you have a chance to watch uh, episode five of X-Men 97 yet? Because if you did not prepare yourself for an amazing episode, I enjoyed episode four a lot because it had the mo mojo and the mojo verse and spiral and a lot of really cool characters um but man this one was incredible this one just absolutely takes the cake it's the best episode um by far so far but uh that's i feel like the talk this week um but it's monday monday night lineup we got everybody's going tonight izzy's back this week um it all kicks off with izzy verse and his comic book weekly pull list uh, over at izzy verse nyc um, he did a good live stream covering the hot 10 list. Um, then, of course, we got Comic Book Addicts. We got a great guest tonight coming back for the second time to talk more about Kingsville. He dropped issue two recently. Uh, my buddy Thomas Holes, he's uh, also a comic book collector and toy collector. Uh, so I want to talk about all that stuff. Uh, Between the Lines is at 8.35 p.m. Eastern Time. Geek Out with Roscoe. Um, it's going to be on his channel, of course. And he's going to have special guest Norrin Rad, who is an amazing artist. Uh, then we got 22 comics bringing us his top 10 alternatives every week on his live stream. If you've never checked it out, um, he gives us his alternative picks to the hot 10 list. And he comes up with some pretty cool stuff, uh, really interesting stuff. And then my homie, Will, William Cupo Comics uh, does Monday Night Raw Books, uh, community hangout, just a good time over on his channel. And that's at 10 p.m. this evening. So, um. A whole evening full of awesome live streams and be sure to check them out a lot of really good ones going on tonight Let's see what we got in the chat this evening so we got las crucius as usual first he says hooray and woohoo i appreciate you coming out las crucius um he says hello from new mexico what's up man hello from chattanooga i hope you're doing well this evening we got vogs he says hi scotty what's up vogs hope you're doing well man Hope you're doing well this Monday. Um, really nice Monday here in Chattanooga. Hope it's nice where you guys are at. We got Marcus, my comic book brother, Marcus Circumstances. He says, what's up, homies? Uh, me and him got some pretty cool stuff in the works on down the road. Still flushing out the details, so I can't talk about it yet. But some big stuff, if it all works out. We'll talk about it soon, hopefully. We got Wellbore saying, Hell hello, hey, fellas, lurking and working. I appreciate you coming out, bro. I really do, man. Um, crap, what was it? There was something else that I was wanting to talk about, it seems like, and I'm forgetting. Oh, well, it'll come back to me. We've got 23 Monch. What's up, man? He says, good evening, S Vaughn82. What's up, dude? We got a great live stream. We got an awesome guest. Uh, like I was saying before, Kingsville 2 dropped. Um, I've read issue one. I haven't read issue two yet, but issue one was awesome. Really enjoyed it. Um, and I wanted to have Thomas back to talk to him about that. So I'm going to bring him out in just a minute. Um, but first, I wanted to jump in to a segment that I started last week. Uh oh, hold on. Clear that out real quick. First, I wanted to jump into a segment that I started last week. I apologize, guys. Uh, by the name of YouTube Polls, where I post every week, I post a couple of polls to YouTube. And they're all comic book related. And I ask you guys different questions about cover art or new books that dropped that week or just anything comic book related. But this week, I asked the question, 
Well, actually, I said it was a little bit of a lighter week this week in comics, but we still had some amazing covers. So I asked basically out of these covers, which was their, which was your favorite? And um, I listed Rat City issue one, the cover A, um, and that's by Zay Carlos. I hope I'm saying this correctly. Um, also, there was X Men ninety seven number one, or no, it was issue two, and the beautiful David Mack cover. And there was Thundercats issue one, the third printing by David Nakayama. And last but not least, we had Batman First Night issue two, a beautiful Furma cover and i know i'm not saying that right but i'm saying it the best i can but anyways out of 36 votes the david mack cover won so cover of the week x-men 97 issue two the david mack cover did that surprise any of you guys it really didn't surprise me i felt like that was a beautiful cover um so that one that one was definitely deserving of cover of the week that was pretty cool but the second poll that i did for my youtube polls was about ultimate x-men i wanted to see what you guys how you guys felt about this new ultimate x-men series so i asked this past new comic book day we got issue two of ultimate x-men in this issue we got introduced to maystorm this series is different that's for sure my question for you guys are you currently enjoying the ultimate x-men series and um we got 22 votes and at, and i ask um I told anybody that commented that I would feature the comment as well. And um, out of the 22 votes, 77% said I'm enjoying the series so far. So actually people are enjoying it so far. So they're still riding with the series. And 23% uh, said not my X-Men. And uh, we got a comment and by Cliff NY. And he said, it's not exactly what I was looking for, but I do enjoy it. And I, my, opinion of the series pretty much reflects that i do enjoy it so far um it's obviously not your typical x-men series but i knew it wasn't going to be coming from peach momoko and uh but anyways let's see who we got see if we got anybody else in the comments before i bring out our guests we do we got collecting with durs what's up man he says look at these pimps and legends what's up adam i hope you're doing well this evening um we also got dr von hoot dropping in he says evening all What's up, Hoot? I hope you're doing well over there in England, wherever. Um, I forget what part. Drop where you're at exactly in the comments because I forget, but I hope you're doing well wherever you're at, Hoot. Uh, we got Comic Cap Collectibles saying hello all. What's up, Scotty? What's up, Comic Cap? Thanks for coming out, man. Uh, but anyways, let's bring out the guests. We got an awesome guest this week. Um, the guest this evening is a comic book collector, a podcaster, a writer, a creator who just put out issue two of his series, Kingsville. Um, and he's also one of the dopest toy collectors that I know. Uh, Y'all help me welcome back for the second time, Thomas Holes to the live stream. What's, What's up, up, dude? How you doing, man? Good to be with you again. Love your show, yep, bro. Dude. So glad to have you back. Uh, how have you been, man? It's been about nine months since you were here the last time. How have you been the past nine months? What's been going on? Ah, pretty good, man. You know, collections getting bigger, wife's getting angrier, um, uh -oh. issue two is out. You know, all those good stuff, man. Well, that sounds everything sounds good except for the wife getting upset. <laughs> yeah. uh, That's all good, man. But man, uh, for anybody that didn't see the last time that you were here, that may not have seen that last episode, um, tell tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, yeah. Where where do you currently reside, and what do you do? Yeah, so I, I live in Southern California near Palm Springs. Um, been awesome. here my whole life, born and raised in San Bernardino, but I uh, live in Palm Springs now. Um, but yeah, man, everything's been going good. Working on uh, issue three as we speak, but we were able to release issue two of Kingsville in, uh, I believe it was February. Um, it uh, shipped out and cool. it's been a lot of fun, man. Um, absolutely love writing, um, love creating all these characters. Uh, Dan Zay is my artist and I think he does a pretty bang up job. I think issue two yeah. is even better than issue one. And obviously the more you do, right, the better you get at it. So uh, I feel of like course. I'm starting to get into like second and third gear, man. It's been pretty fun. Well, that's good to hear. Um, I, I did read issue one uh, yep. like I was saying before, and I enjoyed issue one. It was awesome. Um, and the artwork was really good. I can say to anybody that's watching that hasn't checked it out, the artwork, the inner artwork is awesome. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, it was definitely really cool. I haven't checked out the second issue yet, but I can't wait to check it out. Um, but what was um, 
what was it like putting together the second issue? Um, what was the process like putting that together and everything? Cause you work a regular job as well. So you, you're probably trying, you probably have a really busy life. I would imagine. Yeah. I mean, I'm very fortunate, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit older. So, uh, you know, my kids are all adults. I have four children, but they're okay. all 18 and above a couple of them live out of the house. So things have uh, gotten a little easier um, because that responsibility isn't as great as it used to be, which, uh, you know, it's just my wife and I now. And uh, so the, the freedom and the time is there um, to be able to handle a little bit more, which is pretty cool, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, everything's going good, man. Uh, as far as the process goes, I'm still working with the same artist, Dan. Um, he's even working on issue three for me. I, I want to make sure as far as the look and feel of the comic, it stays the same. Um, because I think yeah. nothing's weirder than going into a comic book and then getting issue two and you're like, that don't look like what I was reading before. Yeah. Sometimes uh, it, I don't like that sometimes when it changes yeah. up on you. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, I don't it's a deal breaker. Like it either, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that you got issue two going. And I, like I said, I can't wait to uh, check it out. Are you happy with the finished product? Are you happy how it, with how it turned out? I am, man. You know, issue one, uh, Obviously, there's always going to be things that you look back and go, man, I should have done this. I should have done that. I think every issue will, will be uh, some of that. But, um, you know, issue two felt a lot more normal um, and it felt like I was in more of a rhythm, um, especially mm -hmm. with Dan. He was pumping out pages left and right. I couldn't even keep up with him, um, which is nice to have. Right. Because uh, yeah, my artist cool. lives in uh, Europe. He lives in Russia. And so oh, uh, we already have a little bit of a language bar barrier and, you know, I'm going to bed and he's waking up and all kinds of weird stuff, but it's all worked out so far. And uh, it's been a lot of fun, man. He's 24 years old and I think he's quite talented for his age. Um, he did the cover on my main cover right here, um, which you should get uh, anytime, Scott, but uh, that's the main cover oh, right God. there. That's death day. So he, he hooked me up with that cover, um, which is Dude, pretty nice. So cool. Yeah. Hold on, let me blow you up on the screen here. Yeah. So we can check that out. Right, give me just yeah, a second. It came out really nice, I thought, man. And then the interior work, I think you did a pretty bang up job as well. There you there go. There you go. Yeah. I was I saw that on um I looked up Kingsville. I'd Googled it to check out some different info and stuff. And I saw that cover. And I was like, damn, dude, that is an awesome cover. Yeah, it came out really nice, man. Here's a little bit of the interior right there. That's yeah, that looks really weird. good. That's yeah. that's an awesome panel right there, jumping out of the plane. That looks yeah. really good, man. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Um, I'm enjoying where the story is going. Issue issue three is just going to be nuts, man. Um, but you know, issue two ended in a in a pretty unique way that I think will keep people excited and uh, tied into the story. Um, but well, yeah, I'm um, really happy with Dan, man. Great job. Well, without without giving away. Uh, too much of of the story or anything what what's the gist of the story for people watching that may be interested uh what's it what's it about yeah so if you read issue one you know that uh ags which is the alliance for global safety which is a non-profit organization um out to do good um within the world they're bringing nations together to help with trade to help with safety all these great mm -hmm. things and they get their hands on this mineral that comes from an island nation called kingsville um, and that mineral is called psychodone. And when they bring it in house and their science team starts to work on it, they realize this has properties that go far beyond anything that we um, thought it would. And eventually they find out that it, with this property, um, you could actually create a serum that gives you superhuman powers. And they start to test it and build a superhuman team. And all those nations that agree to join AGS, the Alliance for Global Safety, the deal mm -hmm. is we're going to put one of these superhumans in your nation to help you with safety and everything else that is needed within that nation. So on the outside, everyone's really excited. Um, you know, each of these nations are really happy to have the help. Um, but what they don't realize is AGS is actually using these superhumans to do some pretty nasty stuff. Kingsville wow. is starting to get an idea about this. Rodrigo and uh, Marissa, specifically Rodrigo, who are the two scientists at AGS that developed this serum, they're starting uh -huh. to you know, question things that are going on. And uh, Kingsville says, look, man, I'm not sure what you're doing with this. I don't like that you're gaining the type of power you're gaining. And we're going to cut you off from this mineral. And AGS doesn't take that uh, very lightly, and they're not too happy wow. about it. And so you'll start to see how they start to handle that. And then issue three just ramps up. And then issue four will be the end of that arc, and it's going to end in a crazy way. 
Okay, yeah, and actually, I was going to ask you, um, I was leading up to, let me switch the screen back, How? Uh, there we go, um, I was actually going to ask you, how, where do you intend to go with the series, how far do you, would you like to go, Where? how far does your dream go with this Kingsville series? Yeah, well, I, I wanted to kind of start off small, be super practical, you know, jumping into independent mm -hmm. comics is more simple today than it's ever been before. So if you have a passion for stories and you want to tell your stories, it's it's much easier to find an artist to partner with and a letter and a colorist. Um, you could go to like a comic wellspring or Kablam to print it. So it's the, the ease of getting into it is really good, but it's very difficult, right? It takes a lot of money up front. It's a lot of hard work. Um, and so I wanted to be very practical and it's a very crowded space. A lot of people are entering into comics right now, which is great as a collector. So I'm on both yeah. sides of this world, right? I'm, I'm reading stories that I think are absolutely amazing in the independent world. So I'm loving it, but it is yeah. very yeah. crowded, um, which means, you know, I want to be practical. So, um, I'm going to have a four part arc and that arc will end this portion of the story. Um, and then it'll go into a trade. And uh, if people are enjoying it, then we'll continue it. So it'll be left open to continue. Um, but okay. right now I'm just focused on that four, four part arc. So, okay. Awesome. Well, um, man, that's going to be cool. I can't wait to see it unfold. And uh, I can't wait to get that issue too, man. Like I, I can't wait to read that uh, issue. One was awesome. My favorite character, um, and I'm drawing a blank because we're live, and I always, I always do this. What's the really big guy? The the real yeah. big bulky guy. Yeah, the right guy on your, on your hoodie. Yes, that's the yeah. man. That's my man right there. Yeah, his name is Collapse. Um, his name yeah. is David, and uh, but his uh, superhero name is Collapse. He's super big, very strong. Um, but obviously, when you're that big, you're not too fast. But, you know, his superpowers is strength. Um, all of them have super strength, but his superpower is being able to collapse into a pool of liquid. And then he becomes quite fast. He could go under doors, up walls, all that good stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's collapse, man. He's he's definitely the, the fan favorite. I've actually sold out of issue one, cover A, which has him on the cover. Um, yeah. Just because I, I think everyone's kind of falling in love with him, yeah. Yeah, he's a badass. Yeah, he's he is a he, badass, man. <laughs> he's really cool. Yeah, I like him a lot. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, what's there was something else I was gonna ask you as far as oh, okay. Um, for anybody watching that wants to uh check the series out, man. If they anybody wants to go pick it up, where can they find it at? Where can you find Kingsville at online? Yeah, you could go to worldatwarcomics.com. You could purchase all the covers there, um, issue one and issue two. You could go to TikTok and go to my TikTok page. I have a TikTok store. That's where most of my sales come from. I think it's just very easy for most people. Um, and then uh, on eBay, if you uh, type in Thomas Halls, you'll see it pop up there and you'll be able to purchase it there. Awesome. Awesome. So you guys heard it. Go check it out because I can, I can tell you issue one was pretty badass uh it does not lack the the action for an issue one because sometimes issue ones they don't have any action because you're building up um but it, it has plenty of everything and it's a good story too i enjoyed it so you guys I if you want to check it out um you know where to go get it and i noticed that you've been doing a lot of traveling here lately i've been following you on ig because you're a cool yeah. ass dude you're a toy collector like me you collect comic books we got a lot of similar things in common uh, so I enjoy checking out your IG and uh, I noticed you've been doing a lot of traveling lately. Uh, wh what you been up to, man? Yeah, you know, work um, takes me to a lot of places, which is really cool because every time I'm in a different spot, I always have an afternoon where I hit as many comic shops as possible. So in cool. Houston, I was hitting all kinds of comic shops. I would tell you, man, per capita, Houston has a ton of comic shops, man. It's awesome. Really? I've oh, never yeah. been to Houston. Never got to go. You got to go, man. Um, they, they're just cool, man. It, and I went into one and I'm drawing a blank. It was a sci-fi comic shop. And so mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be a lot of like Star Trek and Star Wars and Green Lantern, which there was plenty of that. But it was a very traditional comic book store, but it was huge, man. It must have been, you know, maybe 1,800 square feet, like the size of someone's house. It was wow. huge. And they had so many toys, man. I had a blast. They had a whole section of X-Men um, some yeah. of the old series one and series two Marvel legends. And it was awesome. They had another section of McFarlane, which I'm a big McFarlane collector. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah, I was just, I was a black, I was just sitting there looking and drooling everywhere. I just wish I had more money, man. 
<laughs> yeah, it's hard too because um, I used to work on the road some back in the day, and it was hard because you you're getting to see all these cool places and go to all these cool places, but you're having to keep reminding yourself that you're there on business and you're there to yeah. make money, not to spend yeah. a bunch of money. It, it was hard at times. Yeah, hundred percent, man. But you know, <laughs> I, I love seeing it. You know, comic culture, right? We all are participating in this comic culture, but you go to different regions um, in the U.S. and it's a little different everywhere. And uh, I love that, man. I absolutely love it. It's so what cool. Was, what was, uh, wh what's your favorite shop in, in Houston? I'm not going to say the best shop, but what's your favorite shop? It would have been that sci-fi shop. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the link as far as the name. I'll, I'll look at my receipts because I keep all my receipts for everything that I purchase because I have the podcast and everything else I do. So I use all my purchases as a tax write-off at the end of the year since okay. it's my backdrop for my podcast. So there's all kinds of fun things that you could do in order to recuperate some of the stuff that you do on your collection. Um, so I keep all my receipts. So I have a receipt and I'll, I'll get you the name. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but that sci-fi shop was dope, man. Incredible. Sounds yeah, yeah, that sounds good, man. You'll have to let me know. And uh, you mentioned the podcast, which is awesome because I wanted to bring that up as well because I don't know how you get some of the guests that you get. But you have, it, you guys that are watching, you got to check out his podcast. Um, to just name off some of the some of the people that you've had just in the last couple of months on your podcast. These guys that are watching, they're gonna want to check it out, man, because he's he's got some amazing guests. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate that, man. Yeah, I've been very fortunate um, to get responses from quite a few people. Um, I've had Todd McFarland, Jeff Johns, Peter Tomasi, Francis Manipul, Tim mm. Seeley. Um, man, I, I've had a lot. I'm trying to look. I had uh, W. Maxwell Prince um, yeah. just recently for Ice Cream Man, which is such Love a ice cream, man. comic. Yeah. Um, I have uh, Mark Silvestri coming on next month. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, man. It's just been a lot of fun. You know, once you get one or two decent names, right? And then people are like, okay, I'll go check it out. And as mm -hmm. long as you're positive, I think it's not that bad. And I, I keep everything positive, man. I, no doubt as a comic book collector, there's stuff that I read. I'm like, dude, that is not my thing. Um, but instead of going online or on X and telling everybody, everybody how much I hated it, I just keep it to myself and I move on to the next thing because I have people that I follow and I'm friends with that like stuff I hate, man. And so I'm just like, you know, I'm just gonna keep it to myself, stay positive. And so I think it allows creators and writers and artists to say, you know what? It feels like it's a, a pretty safe environment for me to go on, um, you know, because he doesn't talk crap behind my back after I've had him on the podcast. So I think that helps as well, man. I just try to keep things positive, bro. Awesome. And what, what do you typically talk about on the, is it, is it like interview format? Yeah, it is. For the most part, it's interview format. Um, you know, I, the goal there's, so the reason I started the podcast is because I wanted to be a creator and writer. I had a story. I wanted to create my own comic book. So I created the podcast to bring other creators and writers on. So that way I could learn from them. And that's how it started. Tony Cottrell from the owner of Advent Comics was my first um, podcast I ever had. Genuinely great person. Lives in Baltimore. Um, and if you've never read Advent Comics, you need to get on that. He's been, I, have. I think he just celebrated his 15th anniversary. So he's not... He hasn't done this for like for a couple of days, man. He's been doing this for a long time. He's kind of OG, especially in that Northeast area. And I just mm -hmm. learned a lot and, uh, and I loved it. And so I just kept doing it. And then I was able to score like a Jeff Johns and a Todd McFarlane. And it just, yeah. I don't know, it's just been kind of a little bit of a domino after that. And I think people just trust that I'm going to, you know, shine the light on the, the person that's on the podcast. And that's really all I do. It's not about me. It's about the person on and yeah, uh, hopefully yeah. everybody else gets to know those folks from coming on the podcast. Man, that's so cool. Where can yeah. people check that out at? And when does, when does the podcast happen? So unlike yours, man, you're so organized, Scott, where you have like a timetable. I'm terrible, bro, because I, I work and I work from home and I own my own business. Yeah, I'm kind business of all over the place. Yeah, yeah. So I just plug them in whenever I can. I, most of my podcasts are pre-recorded, and then I um, drop them on the YouTube um, whenever I'm done with those podcasts and I get time to kind of cut them up and make sure they look clean. Um, gotcha. So you just got to okay. kind of follow me. I will always post when I drop a new interview. Um, but yeah, I don't have like a set time. Like every Friday at this time, I'm going to have someone on, which if I was smarter, I probably would have done that. But also the flexibility because I'm – I'm usually inviting folks that are pretty busy. It allows yeah. me that flexibility to kind of bring them on whenever it's best for them as well. Man. So 
Very valid point. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. With people like that, you pretty much have to bend to their will, I guess. But yeah, yeah man, that, that makes on, man. Sense. Like, I'll do whatever, man. I'll call off. I'll do whatever, man, um, to get some <laughs> of those folks on, you know? Awesome. Awesome. Um, what did you, I want to go back to the, your travels. Did you get to pick up anything at all when you were out traveling this past time? Did you pick up any cool toys or anything? I did, man. So I'm a, I'm a big Jonah Hex fan. Uh, if everybody's ever read Jonah Hex from DC comics. I never uh, have. I've never checked it out, but I've, I've seen the comics when I'm like out hunting and stuff, but. So good. I, I thought I had one laying right here. Maybe I don't. I've never read any of it though. It's so fun, man. It's just, it's a blast. Um, but, uh, I picked up a, uh, an old DC direct figure of Jonah Hex. I picked cool. up, um, spider spot, which is one of the newer, um, you know, Spider-Man part of that Spider-Man package from Marvel legends that they've been dropping all kinds of really cool figures. I picked um, up a is, bunch of comics, man. Is he the one with the, uh, that shoots like projectiles from his hands? Exactly. Yeah. He's like too. this. I he's grabbed like, him. Did you? Yeah. His yeah, uniform. Dude. So dope, man. It looks so good. Yeah, he looks he's one of those online. He he didn't look that impressive. He he almost was like a skip to me online. And I, yeah. I saw it in person, was like, dude, I'm buying it. I'm getting yeah. it. It's I did cool. the same thing, man. I was like, eh, I don't know about that one. And then I saw it, man. I'm like, nah, that's gotta be in my collection, man. That one's going home. <laughs> yep, exactly. You're coming with me. That's awesome, man. Well, yeah, as far yeah. as comics go this year, have you um what are you collecting right now? What what are, are you are you picking up any comics as of right now? Yeah, man. I mean, uh, I'm a big Conan barbarian. Oh, it's that. I'm sorry. I said I know you're busy. That's why I said, uh, are you picking up any? Um, yeah, yeah. No, I'm definitely. I mean, the comics that I think are killing it this year is uh, Jim Zub with Conan. If you're not reading Conan right now, under oh, yeah. Titan Comics, the Titan Comics run. Yes. Next level, sure. man so good um jeremy adams i think he's probably one of the best writers right now very young up and coming he worked for the wb and he did um, a lot of the animated series for dc before coming over to dc to as a writer and uh you know obviously he had that awesome flash run with wally west um he's doing currently green lantern which i think is next level man he's just killing it on green lantern philip kennedy johnson with incredible hulk i'm collecting yeah. that right now um, I yeah. think he's killing it. And then obviously war journal with uh, John Stewart. Um, we were is just talking. About, good? What's that? Is war, is that still good? I haven't read still, that one in a while. It's still pretty good, man. I think he just dropped issue seven was the last one that came out last week, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, the story's good. And a lot of people don't realize Philip Kennedy Johnson and Jeremy Adams are pretty good friends outside of writing comic books. And now they're uh -huh. both on a green lantern um, property. And so you're going to start to see okay. a lot of things happen between John Stewart and Hal Jordan. Um, we're already wow. seeing a lot of the other Green Lanterns come in, like Jessica Cruz, um, Simon Baz, um, Joe Mullen was in the last um, issue of Green Lantern. So they're bringing mm -hmm. a lot of the Earth Lanterns together, and the story is just getting crazy good. Man, that's cool. I haven't been on uh, any of the Green Lantern runs in, in a little while, man. That, I'll have to find a jumping on point and get back on. Um, yeah. But we were talking about before the live stream, you mentioned uh, you mentioned you had don't you have the uh, rider of beneath the trees coming up on your podcast? Did you mention yeah. that? Yeah, Patrick Horvath. He'll be on my podcast. I might we'll be recording tomorrow morning and then it'll mm -hmm. probably post the next day. Um, so I okay. have him. I have Ryan Caddy on after that, who uh, writes with Top Cow and um the hunt Sorry, i didn't mean to i didn't mean to just randomly jump back to that but i just happened to think about us talking about that and i know yeah. a lot of people that are watching right now are really into that book dude this guy i'm i'm i met him at wondercon um he was at wondercon and his line was ridiculous out of all the amazing people they had in mm -hmm. artist alley dude his line was non-stop man because if you're not reading that which it sounds like all the folks in the chat are, dude, you're making yeah. a huge mistake. It'll blow your mind, man. So I have him coming on tomorrow, which is going to be a lot of fun. And I want to dig into like the type of a person that could come up with this storyline. Dude, it's yeah, crazy, yeah. man. I'm just like, dude, Patrick, everything okay, man, at home? Everything good with you, bro? Because this is <laughs> insane, man. <laughs> yeah, because uh, my buddy Taylor Winder, for him uh, to say that it's a great book, it's it has to be an, a phenomenal book. For yeah. Taylor Winder to say that it's as good as, but uh, I, I've been trade waiting it. I'm I'm waiting it out, and I'm gonna pick up a really nice trade. 
And um, so I, I've been missing out, man. I feel like I've been missing out on it. Everybody's saying it's so good. We just dropped issue five, issue six is coming up and usually they go five or six issues. So the trade should be out in the next couple months for you, Scott. So you should be good, bro. Yeah. I'm going to pick up. I'm hoping, no spoilers. Yeah. I, I'm hoping they do like a really nice, like deluxe version of it because it's such a cool book and I'll pick up that. I'll, I'll get a really nice copy of it or something. Yeah. That'd be dope, man. Make it, make it worth the wait. Make exactly. The wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you, you collect toys. Um, I do. If, on an insane level, dude, like, uh, at probably, well, I say probably, probably, yeah, far beyond me. You, you have a lot more than I do. I have a few, I have probably about 500 or so between Marvel legends, Marvel select, and then all my McFarlane stuff. So yeah, it's McFarlane's definitely my number one. I love McFarlane. I think the quality of McFarlane, um, outpaces everybody else. Um, but, and then I like Marvel select only because they're seven inch, just like McFarlane. Um, and then I have a okay. lot of Marvel legends too, but man, Marvel legends every morning I come in and I'm picking them up off the floor constantly, man, especially the female figures with the high heels. <laughs> yeah. How do you it's stand fun. those things, man? Uh, yeah. If they fly, I'll try to make them, I'll put the females in flight if possible. Like if they have the ability to fly, they're going to hang from floral wire. So I don't have to stand them up. That's my go. trick on those. I think I might have to do that, bro, because it's so frustrating, man. I'm constantly picking them up off the floor. I'm like, dude, what I do is I take the discs that come with the McFarlane and I use those for yeah. some of my Marvel Legends because it just they're really hard to stand up. But and I love them. A lot of my favorite figures come from Marvel, so. And that's one thing that I wish that Mar that Hasbro would incorporate in the Marvel Legends that they do. They don't do the little base stands like a. Uh, mcfarland does with dc multiverse i wish they would do that though it'd be really cool yeah it would i'd just be afraid how much more they would charge because marvel legends ain't cheap oh my man. god They're like 30 bucks now and you could still get mcfarland for 19.99 at target and walmart and i think it's better quality again you're not getting all your favorite uh figures that's the that's why i keep buying marvel legends because i love marvel too but uh yeah you're right man i hope i wish they would put a little disc in there i don't think it would cost that much yeah, geez, it, yeah, you got me thinking though. They they would probably tack on like an extra five bucks for that little disc. <laughs> Marvel Hasbro definitely would, yeah. Uh, but I actually, um, I picked up Angel last week, which is probably the coolest one I've picked up recently, and um, it was actually a decent price point, dude. It was I think thirty five, but for for that figure to see it in person, it was worth. I feel like it was worth that. Where a lot of them, I really honestly would have thought it would have been fifty. Um, but that one was actually decent, 50, right? Weren't they forty nine ninety nine at Target? Which ones? For Angel. Oh, I don't know. I I, I picked it up at a GameStop. Oh, okay, maybe not. Maybe I'm thinking of another character because some of the like the uh, Ghost Rider that was forty four ninety nine at Target. Man, I'm like, and the wow. bike was just a red bike. I'm like, it's not even. Oh detailed. yeah, yeah. Wow. That one it didn't have any articulation or anything. Yeah, that was crazy. Uh, that was a big pass. Crazy. Yeah. yeah, that was definitely past, man. I'm like, ah. What's up, Pops? Thanks for stopping by. We got Stephanie, Madam Black. Ma we got Madam in the house. I almost said nice. Madam Blaster. She's just going by Madam now. So what's up, Madam? <laughs> she dropped cool. the blaster. What's up, Phil? What's going on, Phil? Welcome, guys. Had some people pop in. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, I enjoy, uh, I, I really enjoy following you on IG to see what you pick up and you were DC multiverse, you said, is what you pick up the most often. Do you order? Do you go on hunts like I do, or do you? Are you ordering the waves, or how are you picking up the toys? It depends on the product. I do it all. So, yeah. whenever something comes out from McFarland, usually 9 a.m. on the day it's released, I'm on McFarlandToyStore.com, and I'm yeah. picking it up there because if it comes in like if it's a four, um, usually it's like a four figure pack, right? Comes with four individual figures. And yep. they go for anywhere from $19.99 to $24.99 a piece in stores. If yeah. you go on that first day at McFarland, you'll get like 30% off if you buy all four at the same time. So the best price that you'll ever pay oh. on McFarland is on his website. Now, of course, if it's a, if it's a, an exclusive for Amazon, Big Bad Toy Store, or Entertainment Earth, you're not going to mm -hmm. get that kind of a savings. Um, but, man, I always start with McFarland Toy Store because you're going to get the best price um, when it drops. Okay. Um, for sure. And if you use capital M T S 10, 
you're going to save 10% every time. And that's not a code that is, um, you know, seasonal or anything. That's an ongoing code. So if cool. you're not aware of that, use that every time and you pretty much get free shipping. Man, that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to definitely take, yeah, I'm going to use that for sure. Yeah, well, uh, I wanted to ask you what, what are, what do you think is the best toy line out right now in your opinion? I mean, well, it's, let me show you something, man. So the best toy line is going to yeah, be. Yeah, what's the, what's the best thing in production right now? What's the best thing? They're not cheap, but Astrobots by far, you could get them on Big Bad Toy Store. The mm -hmm. articulation is ridiculous. I don't know if you can see that. That's a joint for in the finger. There's four different joints in the finger. Oh, wow. Like that, I've never had a, anything with finger joints on it like that. That's crazy. It's crazy. The articulation on this is insane. The characters are dope. They stand properly. And if you haven't read Astrobots from Massive Comics, you're missing out. Simon Furman. Yeah, I was getting to say, don't they have comics? They do, yeah. So it started as a toy line, and then they wanted to create a comic book around the toy line. And they hired oh. Simon Furman, who wrote Transformers in the UK and then wrote Transformers for many years for Marvel in general. Um, and he's in the um, Transformers Hall of Fame because he was oh, on wow. that property for so long. And now they hired him to write Astrobots. And uh, so they had a five-part series this last year in, in June. The second arc starts and the comic is dope, man. So here's uh, here's Apollo. Here's Vulcan. Oh, that, that looks is, awesome. Dude, it's crazy articulation. That so is the, killer. Dude, it's way killer, man. Way killer. And I've never, I don't have any figures with like full finger articulation like that. That's crazy. Dude, it's insane. So as far as like the best toy that you could purchase by mm -hmm. far astrobots man but they're not cheap man this is i think 65 dollars. Yeah. this one was 89 dollars. so they're not cheap um luckily they don't come out with them too much but they're dope man dude what's the what is a toy line that you wish would get made that has not been made yet have you ever Ooh, thought about that question i have i mean i'm super excited because i'm a big fan of eric powell the goon i don't know if mm -hmm. you've ever read the goon but i've checked dude, out the goon so yeah. fun, man. It's funny. It's hilarious. It's gory. It's it's kind of horror slash action. And they mm -hmm. just came out with a figure of the goon that I posted a few days ago. Um, so that one's been taken care of. Um, I would say oh, that's a tough one, man. Yeah. I wish we could go back. I wish um McFarlane would go back and produce all the milestone uh figures. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that would be awesome. He did a static shock, but the static shock he did was like this futuristic version of it. No one likes it. In fact, if you go to McFarland Toy Store right now, you could pick it up for $10 because I guess he never sold through them. But if he crappy. could go back to that early 90s um, and start to produce all of that entire hardware, like all of those characters, those are icon. Dude, icon is the yeah. same as Superman as far as powers go, but he has the intelligence as a lawyer. Like everything about Icon is so amazing. We should yeah. have a figure of him, right? So if they could go back and do that, they own the rights to it. And Todd McFarlane has the rights to everything within the DC multiverse. So I'm, I'm hoping that he will go back and do that because I think those are some of the figures that I would love to have in my collection. Man, I think that's a phenomenal idea. And people love, people still to this day love Milestone. Oh, I think it would work. I think it would totally I think work. I think so, man. I, they don't get enough love for some reason. And, and maybe, you know, they're going to put money um, where fans are at. So maybe there's not enough people that uh, are my age that grew up with Milestone. But those characters are dope, man. They're so good. So good. Yeah. Brian LCS, what's up, man? Thanks for joining us. We're talking toys right this second. Uh, yeah, good turnout, man. Yeah, talking about, uh, yeah. And I thanks for everybody coming out this evening. I appreciate you guys. And uh, we're talking, uh, if you're just popping in, we're talking toy lines that we wish were made um, that have not been made. And I'll give you mine. Um, yeah. I actually picked up, they. I found out they had Funko Pops of mine this past uh, two weeks ago, and I got one for my birthday. But my pick is Cap Captain Planet. 
Oh yeah, OG. I want to see a full Planet. wave of Captain Planet figures. <laughs> I want <laughs> Captain Planet to come back. Uh, I think yeah. that would be cool, man. I just think that think it would be. I don't know how well that they would sell. I don't know how well it would work compared to your idea. Um, but I love Captain Planet. Yeah, I think if they do something around the comic book again and bring that back out strong with figures, I think it could do all right, man. Yeah. You know, yeah, you know, McFarlane has those page punchers where it comes with a comic and the figure. I think that would yeah. be perfect for something like Captain Planet. That way people could get reintroduced to it that didn't grow up with Captain Planet. I think that'd be awesome. That would be awesome. And uh, speaking of the page punchers, man, I picked up one of those last week. Um, yeah. One of the upgrades, the new spawn ones that come with two figures and the comic stand. Yeah. Um, so- Sixteen ninety nine price point, um, and you get the stand. You get this really nice bookmark, which I know, like you're thinking, oh, it's just a bookmark, but it's a really, really nice, like thick bo- bookmark. Um, comic stand, two figures. The figures are actually they actually have some articulation. It was surprising. Um, the paint, the paint app is much better on these than the first page punchers. I don't know. How, have you picked any up? How do you feel about those? Have you checked them out? I have them all. So I, I picked up really? all of them. In fact, the GI Joe and the Transformer ones are the newest ones. So McFarlane got the rights for certain things through Hasbro um, mm-hmm. to utilize for page punchers. So he can't do six or seven inch figures, but he could do the page punchers. So he came out with, I'll show you right here. Here's the, the Transformers. Here's Megatron and Optimus Prime. Oh, man. Oh, cool. How cool is that? And it came with two comic books instead of one. So one comic book is Optimus Prime. The other one is Megatron. And this was the newest uh, page puncher that came out. And then he came out with two G.I. Joe ones, one with Snake Eyes and Duke, and then one with Crimson Red and um, um, what's his name? The leader with the the shield in his face, um, Cobra Commander. So... Oh, yeah, um, it's yeah. incredible. Yeah. And so these, these came out dope when that, when Man. I heard that he got the rights to it, I was wondering, you know, are they, are they going to really be that nice? Again, the articulation is not super great, but there is articulation, but they're, they're probably almost two inch figures. They're pretty cool. It surprised me. I didn't expect anything at all, but the, I mean, they bend at the waist. They've been at the, they've been to a couple different places. They have a couple different, uh, more than I expected. So I was surprised. Great. Agree, agree, and you get a comic book out of it too, man, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. The one I got was the um, it was the one with uh, she spawn and uh, what was the other guy? Oh, I can't remember. It was an uh, her and another guy, and it came with uh, scorched issue seven, I think. Or, yeah, yeah, maybe. yeah. She spawn is all over scorched, she's kind of the leader. That's kind of Todd McFarlane's Avengers <laughs> for spawn. She's- She's one of my favorite characters. That was why I picked up that particular pack. I found two different ones. Um, okay. but yeah, I picked it up because I like her. And and Scorch, I was on that run for a little while. It was pretty good. It's pretty good. It's okay, yeah. It kind of fell off a little bit, but with issue 350, it's kind of rejuvenated the entire line. So all of those comics have been good to like the last two issues again. Now that there's a new uh new uh, person on the throne in hell. I won't give anything away if someone hasn't read 350, but I feel yeah. like there's a lot of really good energy now within Spawn, which I've always been a huge Spawn fan, but when you got 350 plus issues, man, you're going to have long runs of just really boring stuff. And we went through that a little while with Spawn, um, but I- I'm glad it's rejuvenated because it's an awesome character, man. It's been fun. It's been yeah. fun. And it's still that 299 price point, man. You can't beat it. Exactly, exactly. I think someone has to bend at the waist and they do. Yeah, they do absolutely bend at the waist. <laughs> and they kind of turn, you could turn it right here. Yeah. yeah. And which is way more than I would expect out of those. Exactly. I thought it was just gonna be like a just real stiff, right? Like a little statue. Yeah, yeah. Well, have you had it? Did you have a chance to uh at the beginning of the live stream? I was talking about probably the biggest news of the week was X Men ninety seven, episode yeah. five. Have you had yeah. a chance to watch it? So I've only watched the first two episodes and then I stopped okay. because I want to okay. wait until I think they're doing eight episodes, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not um, sure. Honestly. I'm not sure. So what I like to do, because I loved it, I thought the first two episodes were so epic. Um, absolutely loved it. Gave me good like goosebumps and feels of old school X-Men. So I'm going to wait and then I'm just going to spend a Saturday mm-hmm. and just run through the whole thing. 
but I, I might have to break that with everything that I've heard with episode five. I mean, you had man. grown men and women crying on TikTok because of oh, it. So, dude. all right, man, I, I, maybe I need to break down and just go back and rewatch them again because it's been <laughs> awesome. But the first I'll, two episodes were great. Uh, it only gets better, man. It only gets better. Um, I watched episode four a couple weeks ago and was pretty blown away. And I wouldn't have imagined that episode five would be that much better. And was just blown away once again, dude. It's blown away and crying at the same time. So it was yeah. it was that good. So I'm yeah, glad, man. I, I think uh, Marvel needed that kind of energy because they've gotten a lot they of did. bad rap with a lot of stuff they produced lately. So I'm happy for Marvel. Marvel, I think, deserves to have a property like that. That's kind of rocking in all cylinders. And then you know we're getting the three uh, new titles here coming up in May and June. So. Uh, I feel like things are going to kind of ramp up around X-Men and I'm hoping that we'll get into another rhythm of amazing X-Men comics. And now, now how do you feel about, because, um, it's not, most of the titles don't have like big names attached to them. Um, yeah. are you excited for, are you excited for this new wave of X-Men that we're going to be getting? Yeah. I mean, it definitely, it's not like the names as far as writers that I would like to see, man. I, like if you already have Hickman, why wouldn't you put him on an X-Men book? Um, mm -hmm. You know, stuff like that. I think they maybe could have done. I'm sure it was offered and maybe he's like, nah, I've checked that box. Like you never know what's going on behind the scenes. Right. But I, you know, I always give everything a, a shot. So I'll give it probably two or three issues and then I'll make my decision whether I keep that in my pull list. Um, yeah. But out of all the names, you know, Gail Simone, um, you know, I haven't loved everything she's written, but I've loved most of what she's written. And if you mm. look at like Wonder Woman, I don't think anybody's had a more positive impact on Wonder Woman than Gail Simone. You look at Red Sonia and what she did with Red Sonia. Um, she she could write, man. You know, so I, I feel pretty good. I think she's on the main title, The Uncanny, if I'm not mistaken. I actually had Tom Brevoort on the podcast about three weeks ago. And man. as you know, he ran Avengers for 26 years. Mm -hmm. And because X-Men is so important, they moved him over to X-Men. So he's leading that entire team and he's picking and choosing who's writing and who's on art. Um, so I had a blast talking to him for Jeez, it's I almost bet. two hours, man. I bet. I bet yeah, that was, was an amazing like, conversation. Oh, this guy is a walking encyclopedia of Marvel comics. He, I, I made a comment um, to him. I said, hey, I've heard through the grapevine. Um, and it, it really came from Joe Casada, who used to be the president of Marvel, um, mm -hmm. I think, what, eight years ago? And he was on Miller Time with Mark Millar. Um, and okay. he said, Tom Brevoort is a walking encyclopedia. So I made that comment to Tom. I said, Tom, someone out there in comic verse called you the walking encyclopedia. He rattled through issues one through 40 of Fantastic Four of every main thing that happened in every single issue. And he goes, you want me to keep going? And I said, do you go if you want, man? But this is crazy. Literally listen to it one by one. Issue one is this. That's issue insane. two is like, Issue three. Dude, he went through the whole thing, man. So, yeah, he is brilliant, man. You might not insane. agree with everything he does, but this guy loves Marvel. He's passionate about Marvel, and he knows his stuff, man. That is insane. Yeah. And, what I, and can people go back and watch that? Is that something we can go back and watch? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All my stuff is on my YouTube. So you go back and watch everything I've ever done. You'll see, man, how terrible it was on my end from the very beginning. And just like you, Scotty, man, you, you've you been doing this for a while, bro. So you're like a professional yeah, well. at it. It takes time yeah. to kind of get used to talking to people and doing that kind of stuff. So I'm I get still much working on it. We all are, bro. We all are, man. But uh, yeah, it was awesome. But yeah, Tom Brevoort was on. I think it's about a two-hour podcast because I told him, I said, hey, I want to be very respectful for your time. We usually go about 45 minutes. He goes, 45 minutes is not going to be enough time for this conversation. We'll go as long as you want, Tom. <laughs> and we did, bro. Yeah. Just kept of course. Absolutely. I would go as, as long as he'll, as long as he was willing to go, man. Agree, man. Agree. <laughs> it was awesome, bro. I, I was... You know, sometimes you you get in front of people like that and you're just kind of dumbfounded, man. I can't believe I'm talking yeah. to the guy that was behind Avengers. Like every Avenger movie was based on a title that he was the lead editor for, um, you know, Mark Millar. I mean, you go through the whole line of all these amazing writers, man. He, he was at the forefront of that. And it was just awesome to talk to somebody who's had that kind of an impact on comic books that have impacted my love for comic books. It's just it's awesome, bro. Oh man, I would have I would have been a nervous wreck. I'll be honest. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I am, man. Like the day before, I'm writing all kinds of notes. I'm trying to be super respectful and not ask kind of gotcha questions or things that might, you know, put someone in a corner. Like I put yeah. a lot of time in, into those kind of interviews just because I, I want people to feel comfortable and I want them to be open to come back and know that, hey, yeah. he did me right. Right. And so, well, uh, and out of respect for that person, they're, they're giving you time out of their lives and, and you want to respect that person and come with as good a questions as you possibly can and be as prepared as you possibly can. I, I get that. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. I think McFarlane was the most nervous I've ever been just because. Yes. Oh my God. Oh my the God. Impact that he's had on my love for collecting uh, figures, comic books, you know, his Spider-Man run, the art that he did was just that's really what captured me um, in the late eighties, early nineties. Um, he blew me away and I've been in love with this guy's uh, work ever since. Um, and uh, man, I was just blown away. And he was the kindest, most down to earth person you could ever talk to. Got on the podcast. Tommy, what's up, man? How you doing? Like he knew me or something. I, I was like shooken by that. Like, Oh shit. <laughs> and so, it's cool. Um, I was watching a documentary just the other day about uh, Todd McFarlane, and um, he's he's huge into baseball, uh, which which I can identify with because I come from a baseball family. Uh, my brother played college baseball. My dad was always a base, baseball coach. I used to work for a minor league baseball team. It's like baseball is in in it's intertwined in my family, so yeah. I could identify with his love for baseball. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. Dude, the guy spent crazy amounts of money on all those home run balls. Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire. It's like $3 million dollars on a baseball. $3 million on one ball. That's mm -hmm. crazy. He said, though, if he didn't do that, he would have never got the rights to MLB, NHL, NFL for all of his figures. So he said that yeah. $3 million investment in a baseball – has paid off. And if you kind of Google what his net worth is, it's about 250 to $300 million today. So McFarland toys exploded after he bought that baseball um, because he was able to pick up all the rights to all the major sports teams. Yeah. They were finally willing to uh, take a look at him and take him yeah. seriously. Yeah. That was, that was so interesting. Yeah. yeah it's crazy. There's man. some really good, really good stuff about him, but circling back about Kingsville, man, I want to talk yeah. about, I, want, I definitely want to talk about that some more before you have to go. Um, when when do you think roughly um, issue three will drop? So we we just finished um, page eight, and each comic's between twenty four and twenty eight pages. Almost. Okay. I think his yeah. last one was 28. So this one will yeah. probably be around 28 as well. So we're almost halfway done with issue three. I'll be right. doing a uh, a Kickstarter at the end of May. Um, so I. It, when I do my Kickstarters, I like to be almost done because I don't want people to wait five, six months for their comic books. So this last time, I think it was five weeks and everyone had their comic books. And the only reason why it was five weeks is because the printer made a mistake um, on the back of the comic book. They put the same back with the same UPC on each of the covers. So uh -huh. we had to redo them again uh -huh. or I would have been uh, sooner. Um, but, you That's know, they cool. were awesome to work with. I used Comic Wellspring and you know, they obviously immediately fixed it and sent out comic books, but you know, it took another week and a half, almost two weeks. But outside of that, I want people to get their stuff. You know, when I go into Walmart and I purchase something, I get everything I purchased that day and I walked out. Um, yeah. Same with Amazon. It comes in like two days. So I, I want, I'm not, I'm never going to be that fast, but I want, when it ends, I want to be serious about it and make sure that people get their, um, you know, their comic that they purchased. I think that's really important and in a timely manner. Um, and then the money, that we make off of that, it never pays for what it costs. Just to give you an idea, mm -hmm. um, it costs me about three thousand seven hundred dollars per issue just in art alone. Wow. Uh, so that's, that's why I do the lettering because I got to save money somewhere. Yeah. Um, and you know, if I'm doing a Kickstarter, I make twenty five hundred dollars. That means I put about you know almost two thousand into it myself, fifteen hundred to two thousand, which is okay, right? This is my love. This is my passion. I want to get it mm -hmm. out there. Um, yeah. And I'm trying to build something that over time will pay for itself. Um, yeah, of course. But, uh, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a huge investment. And uh, that's why I said four and see if we can, you know, at least break even. If I break even, we'll keep going. Um, but if I don't, we'll see what happens, man. You know, I hope that you do keep going, man. And I hope it's successful because I, I thoroughly enjoyed issue one and I can't wait for issue two. And um, anybody that's that's debating whether or not they should check it out that's watching right now. Definitely pick up issue one. Give it a try. 
Um, I think you're going to like it. I really do. I think you guys will, will really like it. I appreciate um, it. Let me show you if it's okay, Scotty. I have no anything you want, man. Show us anything you want. I appreciate it, brother. This is uh so Will Torres is an artist that worked for Marvel and he worked for uh um Dynamite and he's worked for all kind of opus. He did a cover for me. This is why well, I call it my clean cover. This is the team that's Dr. Derrickson and the superhero team. And then he did a we did another oh, one. We called that, this a lot. that was really cool. Yeah, and then we call this the bloody version. So we have the clean version and the bloody version. This has blood splattered all over it. And if you read the comic, you know why, right? Everybody in the world sees this, but in reality, this is what they are. So he yeah. did these two for me, which I'm super excited about. Issue three is going to be done by Omar Francia. Look okay. him up on Instagram, Omar, and it's F-R-A-N-C-I-A. He's uh -huh. worked for DC, Marvel, Dynamite, um, Dark Horse. He's done a lot of amazing work. Um, okay. If you look up his name, you'll see his work. This guy is phenomenal artist, and he's doing a cover for me for issue three with a, a brand new character that will, will be revealed at the very end of issue three. You don't want to miss this. Um, nice. This character is badass. You're going to really enjoy this character. I don't want to give anything away, but don't miss it. And that will be kind of one of my variants. And then I'm going to do a contest um, where I'm going to pay someone the $300 for the cover. Um, okay. and they're going to get a bunch of free stuff from me. Um, if they're chosen as the artist for my, um, variant for issue three as well. So uh, in the next Dude. couple of days, I'm going to reveal that on Instagram. I'm going to throw that out there and I'll pay you, but we're going to let the fans vote on who the winner is. So I'm going to have people submit art on the cover and then we'll do like a contest where all the fans get to pick which artist wins. And then I'll pay that artist like I do any other artist. Um, and then they'll get a bunch of free, uh, cool stuff from me out of my collection, man. That, that is an absolutely amazing idea. There are so many, there are some great artists watching this live stream right now who would, who would know, do amazing variant covers. Uh, so many really good artists in this comic book, in this community, um, so if any of you guys are watching, man, any of you artists that are watching right now, uh, yeah. Pops, Drac, um, I think Norn Rad, who's the guest on Between the Lines this evening, he's an nice. amazing artist. Any any of those, Izzy, any of those people um, can absolutely tear up a comic cover, man. They'll do an amazing cover. I love um, it, man. I love it. Yeah, so, you know, it, I'll let you pick out of all my superhuman characters, you pick the one that you want for the Roscoe. cover and go to town, man. Dude, Roscoe, Geek Out with Roscoe would do a killer cover. He's yeah. a great artist. There's so many good artists come to mind, man. I'm glad you're doing that. That's a good yeah. thing. Yeah, I want to, I want to, do. I love independent comic books. I think about 60, 65% of all my money is spent on Kickstarter and independent comic books. I think the best stories in comics right now are coming on the indie side of things. Um, not that I don't lo uh, love uh, Marvel and DC, but man, I just love indie. So let's give back, man. Let's get these indie um, indie artists, uh, some more work and, uh, throw their name out there, man. I love it. I love it. Was well, there anything else that we got a couple minutes left? Is there anything else that you wanted to mention while you're still here? No, I mean, you know, check me out. Give me a follow on YouTube. We'd love to have you over there on the yeah. podcast. We'd love to have you on IG. IG is kind of my biggest, uh, and probably where I spend a lot of my time. I do have a TikTok that uh, does pretty well, but um, who knows what's happened with TikTok anymore? I don't even know. I didn't want to know. <laughs> so I spent a lot of my time on IG. I think uh, with the amount of money they spend in government and lobbying, I feel like they're going to be around a while. So that's a safe place to kind of grow your following. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of everywhere. It's World at War Comics on every platform you could think of. X, awesome. um, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, um, you name it, I'm on it. Um, and then obviously YouTube at World at War Comics. Um, if you do want to try Kingsville, I have issue one and issue two on my TikTok shop. Just go to TikTok nice. at uh, World at War Comics. You can purchase it there. I ship super fast. You get free stickers, all kinds of stuff. Um, or you could go to worldatwarcomics.com. You could purchase it there. There I got sweaters that say World at War Comics. I have Collapse and Snapback. And I have a new one oh, with cool. Death Day, which is this character right here. Um, but yeah, That's it's cool all, all over, man. I got hats, everything. You name it, I got it, man. And then you got the awesome, you got some awesome podcasts coming up. Yeah, uh, I do, I do, man. All kinds of stuff going. Well, that's awesome, man. I, I, I know you're extremely busy, so I'm very grateful that 
you came through to hang out with me again. I really appreciate you. It's always so fun. And the time always flies by because, uh, like I said, man, me and you, we're both comic collectors. We're both toy collectors. I could talk to you all day long, dude. It's it's <laughs> always a blast. I love it, Scott, man. I, I really appreciate you. Congratulations on all your success as well um, with your you. channel. And uh, man, I love coming on, man. You, you put out some amazing content, so I appreciate you. Thank and thanks you, for bro. everybody to stop by. Nice meeting you. Yeah, all man. You. The chat was awesome tonight. We The chat was blowing up. It was a great time. Um, love it really cool people in the chat tonight and i appreciate you guys um be sure to go check out thomas like he was saying world at war.com pick up world at war comics.com world, world at war comics world at war comics my mistake sorry all good scotty all good brother world at war comics.com and be sure to pick up kingsville issue one check out those podcasts he has some amazing podcasts and follow him on ig he's always posting um his toy pickups comic book pickups and keeping keeping us up to date on what's going on with world at war comics um thomas thank you so much man and thank you all to uh thanks to everybody in the chat um thank you to any of you guys that come through and catch the replay later i really appreciate it um next week we'll have kind of a young dude in the community he just got started doing comic book reviews and i wanted to give him a chance to um meet some people and grow his channel and um it's really important that we have young comic book readers. So we have these young people coming in and buying books and uh, frequenting the shops. And it's not just us. If it's just us, like middle-aged people, it's going to be, it's going to die out eventually. So it's, the young people are important, man. So I want to get this guy on. I want to uh, show him some love and just have a good time and talk to him about comic books and just have a good time next week. Um, so I hope you guys can come back out next Monday, 7.30 PM Eastern time. Um, but for now, Roscoe's got an awesome show. They got artist Norrin Rad. Um, I think he has Phil, Phil's Treehouse as his co-host, and they're gonna draw some amazing art over there as they always do. So be sure to head on over to Roscoe's channel, Geek Out with Roscoe. Um, Thomas, anything you want to say before I click over to our biggie video and end it? No, just thank you, Sky. I really appreciate you, man. Love your channel. And thanks for everyone that joined us today. Um, love this community. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Awesome. See you guys next week. Later, y'all. Later. I'd say that one is a banger, man. It's a real certified banger, dude.